and the time has came for the most accurate predictions for Premier League 24-25 season. Year on year, the Premier League is becoming much more tough, with new top four competitors outside of the big six in every season. And for newly promoted teams, survival is becoming a near impossible task, unless they are perfect on and off the pitch with all the resources they have. We might have a Super League already. And apart from City winning the league, we don't know who all will finish top four, top six or top ten. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm putting Southampton in 20th place. Yes, they played really good football, but I'm not sure if that is sustainable in the Premier League with the current squad. For a team just promoted to the league, their main goal is survival, which does not give you any time and space to work for any long-term project in most of the cases. So unless Southampton scrapped their current style, I don't think they can survive the league. 19th, Leicester City. Leicester City's last relegation was a shocker, and they were too good for the championship. But over the two summer windows, the quality of their squad has diminished drastically. Drewsbury Hall has left the club for Chelsea, who was arguably their most important player in the last season, and then letting go of Ian Nacho and El Brighton. Their new signings are also mostly young players and a 31-year-old winger. They're likely to start with a 5 or 10 points reduction. That is huge. They could finish 16 or 17, but this points reduction would drag them to relegation. And then adding the change in their manager, from Enzo Maresca to Steve Cooper. I mean, Steve Cooper is surely a better manager to fight relegation, but how much the squad will suit him is a big question. Apart from the league-winning season, I really enjoyed Leicester between 2019 to 2021, and they looked like West Ham to always fighting for something, Conference League or Europa League spot or a domestic cup. But this time, I personally cannot expect much from them. 18th. I can't explain properly, but I think if Switch Town could stay, and I'm going with Nottingham Forest for 18th. Nottingham Forest go every season with many signings, including some exciting names, but in both seasons, they were fighting relegation for the larger part of the season. They give you a feeling of a team which is just there to stay, not improving, not going down. But how long can they sustain this? They're not Everton. Despite being so active in the transfer market every year, you don't see much from them on the pitch. I think they're going down this time. 17th, Ipswich Town. I've said this before also that they can go down. It is a real possibility even Kiran McKenna knows that. I told him. But despite of my last year's prediction, this time I believe they can stay. You can draw various similarities with Burnley from last summer, but what I find different is they are not trying to do everything like Burnley did and signing anyone they could. Ipswich Town, even from last season, have been very pragmatic on and off the pitch. Even their football style is very pragmatic. If they are able to get suitable additions before 31st August, giving coach McKenna good options to make tactical changes, I think they can survive. 16th, Everton. They look better in the second half and almost nullify the impact of points reduction in the last season, looking more stable than last two years also. Like it is really after such a long time I'm seeing Everton fans not looking completely disappointed and worried before start of the season. So lots of positive, seeing Daesh and Pickford biggest one for me. And then Jared Bethwaite staying for at least one more season is also a huge boost for them. But I cannot predict higher than 15th as they still need to sign multiple players to do better and I'm not sure they can do much better than last season with current team which looks bang average except 3 per players. But I'll be really glad if they can finish higher or end up anywhere close to 10th. 15th, Brentford. Let's see if they go lower than this. Brentford looked absolutely trash last season. And it was not just because of Tony's absence. I like Thomas Frank as a coach, but he needs to do something with his system because current one has become way too predictable. 14th, Fulham. They are going to miss Palinia massively. And Tosin has also left them on a free transfer. Smithro could be an excellent business, but only if he stays fit. I don't have any doubt over his quality or his adaptability to Fulham, but his injury record in the last few years has not been very good. And I don't know if Marco Silva has anything new or extra to offer. That's why this position seems reasonable to me, the way so many teams have improved in the last two seasons. 13th, Wolves. Last year, I predicted them to finish 15th, and they ended up on 14th, especially when most of the people were predicting them to get relegated or finish 17th. I think they have improved and look more stable than last summer, so a place jump is fair in my view. And as I said last year also, I consider Gary O'Neill a really good manager and he can do better than last year. 12th, Bonnemouth. They finished 12th last season and I expect them to be in a similar position in this season also. I predicted them to finish 14th in the last season, which is not bad considering so many people here were writing them off for sacking Gary O'Neill. But last year, I spent a lot of time to know about Anthony Ariola and his football. And that's why I was very optimistic and said that they will come good by the end of the season. 
And if you followed last season, you must have remembered how the masses changed their view on Von Nemoth and him in the second half of the season. I also don't think it was just a purple patch. Obviously, you can't build a desirable team here like a big six side, but still their transfers have been very smart using a system which is sustainable and also play good football. My only concern is replacing Dominic Solanke, who is joining Spurs. If they are able to find a good replacement, then 12th should be easy for them. 11th, Brighton. Trust me, I'm not doing just because of their last league finish. We know they finished 11th last season because of injuries and playing in Europa League without enough players to compete in two competitions. But even without that, I think going to 8th or above will be tough for them this time. Their new manager appointment is interesting. He's very young and was playing very different football in Germany when he was with St. Pauli. But I think he will need more time than Deserby to make Brighton perform well consistently. Deserby suffered from some key departures in the last season and the club is still missing those qualities in the squad. Brighton have been very cautious in the transfer market which helps them to avoid any risk of going down or any financial consequences. That's why I think they will likely to go slow and steadily instead of throwing money and showing patience. 10th, West Ham. With current arrivals and new manager, this team has the potential to finish top 6 or 7, but I had a hard time putting them ahead of any of the 9 other clubs. And this league is famous for not favouring transfer market winners much. 9th, Crystal Palace. My main reason is Oliver Glasner. I don't think he still gets the praise he deserves. Play attractive football, spot on with tactics, and got the best out of so many of their players in the last season. Yes, Olise has left and his impact on the pitch was very clear, but when he was not available, they were still a tough side to play, including their attack. And I think Smaila Sari is a good business who offers them something extra in attack. If Goy stays and they don't let any other key forward leave, top 10 is within their reach. 8th. Manchester United. Hear me out. If you have time, I would suggest you to watch my last year's prediction on Manchester United. Because I don't think I was so right on any other top 6 club. I predicted them to finish 5th after Ten Hag finished 3rd in his first season and won the EFL Cup. Although they did worse last season and finished 8th. But considering their injuries and they were actually worse than 5th kind of just proved my point. Except Onana, I did not understand any of their signings last season, especially Mason Mount. And I still don't do when you have Bruno Fernandes as almost a default starter. Onana was the only player who had a decent season among all of their signings last season and looks to have a better season this time as well. Their defence looked poorer and it became main reason of their disastrous season at least besides their league finish. And this season, I don't see United better than other big six sides or Newcastle United or Aston Villa. Look, I'm a Chelsea fan. I follow them very closely. So yeah, there is a bias and I can argue well that they can finish top six unless there is a huge injury crisis. Apart from that, inexperience, doubts over Enzo Maresca, so many changes in the squad. With all these, they can finish top 6 in my humble view. I think other big six sides are also looking in better position than Manchester United for this season, including Spurs. And Newcastle and Aston Villa both have a chance to finish above them this season. Some doubts on Aston Villa due to Champions League, but they have been busy in the transfer market to have their squad ready for hectic schedule. Manchester United. I think there are still various issues remain unaddressed. Eric Ten Hag, I was a fan of his Ajax side. No, I was a huge fan of his Ajax side. Even when Chelsea were looking to replace Frank Lampard in early 2021, he was one of my favourite choice. But I still don't have any idea of his long-term plan with United in terms of style of play. I'm not saying that he should only play that Ajax type possession football, but I don't know how he wants to play, which kind of players he need, and then his relationship with players. Look at them and honestly say if they look like a much stronger side than last summer. They may be better as we can hope for less injuries. Okay, I just want to clarify something. I originally prepared this before Delete and Mazuroi news and it kind of make the defense comparatively better both for starting 11 and also for depth. But I'll still go with my prediction as Mazuroi can be a great addition but it's not like their current starting fullbacks are bad or flops. Mazuroi is still an improvement. Delete a good choice but I'll wait to see if he's able to have an impact like Ike's here and how Ten Hag is planning to use him. I'm also not gonna discuss their defence-related issues in detail or Euro signing, these two signings, at least as of now, ticks a lot of boxes for United. But defence was not their only issue last season. Their attack is completely unpredictable. And their main DM as of now is still Kasimaru. In his absence, McTominay. And even if they sign Ugarte, trust me, he is not likely to solve all of their problems of a holding midfielder. And if they start falling down during the season, the club may replace him with Gareth Southgate, Tuchel or someone else. This year would be weird for them. And look, I don't have any issue with United. It is arguably the biggest club of England. 
but i think 8th is a real possibility for them this season 7th aston villa i have already talked about their transfer business and with backing unai emery is getting they can finish 7th even with champions league but obviously a champions league season for a non big six side is always a huge challenge so yeah a very interesting and challenging season ahead for aston villa 6th newcastle united this should not be debatable i guess or if anything a higher position for them they finished 7th last season with those many injuries and champions league they're not in europe this season have made sensible additions and did not let go any of their key players to tackle ffp or psr breaches and remember tonali is coming back which is a huge boost for them him and gibraish if linked well can run rights on paper it looks so complete i can't wait to see them play together luis hall and tino livramento are likely to play more in the starting role and their teenage sensation luis smiley has also played well in the absence of tonali i know he's currently injured but in the next 2 3 months when he's back it will be a great option of the bench and they're also likely to sign a top center back before the end of summer window they should be fighting for top 4 this time again fifth chelsea if you are a non chelsea fan or against current ownership then you will call it extremely biased and if you are in for mariska ball then you might be expecting a top 4 easily such a division created by my club after this pre season it is clear that we need more time and at least in first half of the season there will be many individual errors many tactical mistakes and a lack of connection between players but i think it will come good in second half of the season i personally have concerns on use of nkunku and james who currently are not looking at their best in this system and none of our center backs have been impressive in the pre season but the structure is there and once players gets comfortable with the system and with each other the performance and results should improve drastically there's no doubt on our qualities on the ball and the system also favors that but how much we can improve off the ball will determine where we will finish this season even more important than finishing but why i'm confident chelsea can finish up a united newcastle and aston villa because the way enzo mariska plays but also the way he trains the chances of injuries are relatively lower than what we experienced under pochettino and that's a big deal people don't talk about it often but we really missed players like reese james and kunku lavia for most part of the season in addition to so many injuries going throughout the season and the surprising signing neto should come good hopefully he stays fit him available as an option for both wings is a really underrated aspect of the signing which people are not appreciating enough and how much it can help chelsea with the club not having two winger consistently playing well for a good time apart from that i believe or i hope the players will understand each other better are more experienced than last season and should be less vulnerable in transitions and in the end i can only hope we have been below par from a long time now and i just hope we can start going back to at least top 4 now fourth liverpool when chelsea were looking for a new managers in the last summer anne slot was my pick along with julian nagelsmann what i like about him is that yes he has a really beautiful attractive style and tactics which are not one dimensional but more importantly what i love about him is his personality how he is as a person his relationship with players his approach to man management which i find similar to klopp and angelotti while a football with lapoza considering all the options liverpool had to replace klopp i think he was the best is coming with a lot of good traits of klopp but also with a lot of unique things he offers on and off the pitch new manager coming up with his own ideas his philosophy and at the same time maintaining the harmony and the culture of the club i know i have spent a lot of my time on just the coach but i think for this season this was their single most important signing from all i know about him through his final time and pre season i think it's really positive for liverpool someone who can carry klopp's legacy and maybe win more trophies if given backing in the transfer market as far as this season is concerned biggest one is obviously their attack if i'm being honest as of now i can't name a single forward who looks ready and sharp for the season bar sala but even for him i'm not sure if he can do that well this season if i'm not wrong they still need a defensive midfielder apart from endo and depth in full backs they have failed to sign zobe mendy and currently they don't look to have an option b they yet to sign a single player and while slot has not made any radical changes so far but still he would be needing time to completely implement his style and have the profiles he want for different roles forget the last season this season should be seen as a transition considering new manager and many signings the club needed to compete with city third tottenham hotspurs i am strongly relying on anje for this prediction he is exactly kind of a coach i expected when he joined them last year has a philosophy and influence someone who can connect well with teams can build connections seeing how he did with celtic and what we saw in last one year 
if you judge his whole season, it was a really good first season. They were so close to top four despite losing Harry Kane and experiencing so many injuries during the season. And he was also totally committed to his football style, which looked stupid at times. But I think he knows what he's doing, and the mentality, which might be the biggest reason of Spurs' trophy drought. I was really impressed with how he reacted to their match against Man City at the end of the season. How he really wanted Spurs to finish top four, irrespective of where Arsenal finish, and even if fans did not want them to win. I hope he gets the backing in time. May be able to achieve what they did not at Pochettino do. They are a good side. Hardly any signing from last season failed. I think Archie Gray is a really good signing, and now they have signed Dominic Solanke also. With Europa, it could become a bit more challenging. But with how much Liverpool, Chelsea, and United, all of them in some sort of transition this season, I think they have a strong chance to finish third this time. Second, Arsenal. Yeah, I'm anyway never gonna predict Arsenal to win the league. But come on, unless I've got tired. I don't have any reason to put Arsenal ahead. Yes, they have signed Calafiori, who is without a doubt an excellent addition. Timber, who missed almost entire season, is coming back, and he can also play almost anywhere in the defense. And they might sign at least one midfielder before the window. But even with all these, I'm not sure if they can stay as consistent as Man City, especially in second half of the season. I mean, yeah, Martinelli can play better than last season, and Havertz looked better in second half. But apart from Timber, they were not without a top player in any position for even a month, maybe partly to some extent. I agree that Arteta's squad planning is really top, but they have also been relatively luckier with injuries in comparison to Chelsea, United, Liverpool, or Spurs. Apart from more options from tactical point of view, I do not see any substantial improvement from last season. It is kind of positive because they were really good last season, but I still don't think they are as strong as Liverpool of 18-19, who lost the league with 97 points. And that's the biggest reason to predict City to win again. They go mad in second half, and even your 90 to 95 points will not be enough to win the league. First, Manchester City. They have signed Savio. Guardiola has settled well now. Apart from De Bruyne, no other key player is likely to be unavailable, except major injuries. Julian Alvarez sold for 18 million plus, and yet it does not look like any problem for City. And if anyone can do a five peat, it's Pep City. Anyway, they are not gonna win Champions League anytime soon. So if I have to choose between City and Arsenal on whom I get tired or collapse, I'll go with Arsenal every time. Guardiola is a monster. He will do whatever it takes to win. That's my league prediction, and here is my prediction for individual players: Golden Boot, Erling Haaland. If not him, then I would go for Salah, who I think will either have a hit or his last season in the league. Playmaker: Cole Palmer. If we're able to sort out our finishing or scoring problem, then I think this is one of his best chances. Golden Glove. It's always unpredictable, so I'll go with David Raya. Arsenal can do that defensive shift again, especially with Timber and Calafiori joining them. Player of the Year: Cole Palmer. Not biased at all. Young Player of the Year: Oscar, Bob, or Sevio. And this was my prediction for Premier League 24-25. I hope it made sense. Do let me know your thoughts. And if you like this video, please consider to like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.